Hello, I'm going to do a short presentation on how uh, you sterilize your uh, dental instruments. Sorry for the, the shaky quality of the video as I'm doing this handheld as I forgot, forgot my tripod at home. So bear with me, I, I'll try to, to shoot this as stable as possible. First of all, in order to process instruments, you need personal protective equipment, PPE. That means gloves, a gown with um, sleeves, glasses, and um, maybe something to protect your head, your hair. Uh, so uh, let's begin. You, you just uh, collected the um, instruments from the patient. You will need a transport box. This um, has the role of transporting the contaminated instruments to your sterilization area. It needs to be an hermetically sealed box, which is easily cleanable. So I have my instruments here. Let's say you want to process this uh, explorer and this mirror. I'm using normal gloves as it's easier for me to handle the camera you should be using thicker gloves in order in order to prevent uh, puncturing uh, the gloves and maybe risk infect infecting yourself thicker gloves are more resistant to puncturing so this will help you okay the first step uh, I'm, I'm manually processing the instruments, so the first step is to insert them in an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, this has a special solution with a certain concentration that needs to be written down on the device itself. It's written somewhere along the back, as I don't like to see labels. It uses an enzymatic cleaner and uh, it's special for use uh, in, um, in an ultrasonic cleaner. In this case, I'm using um, Micro 10 Plus from Ecolab in the concentration uh, the producer specifies. I'm using uh, an ultrasonic cleaner with a temperature control. I'm using a 40 degrees uh, Celsius uh, program for 10 minutes. So let's insert the instruments there. When you insert them, be careful not to splatter. Sorry, that was my microphone. And let it end. For the video's purpose, I'm not gonna let it end, as these instruments are already clean and sterile. I'm doing this for demo purposes. After the ultrasonic cleaner finishes the cycle, You'll need to remove the instruments from the ultrasonic cleaner and rinse them with cold water. Thoroughly rinse the instruments. And let the water drain for a few seconds. Ideally, you should document every step of the uh, sterilization process for um, traceability purposes. I'm using a software 
developed by me so I will um, tell the software I've inserted an explorer and a mirror it automatically adds the date and uh, time stamp now after the instruments have been rinsed i'm doing an extra step most uh, uh, most doctors only use this and they then they go to packaging i'm using an extra step in immersing the instruments in a specialized disinfectant in this case i'm using um, Multisept Plus from um, OCC in the concentration recommended by the by the manufacturer. Okay, I have the times written here, so you need to look at the. Um, largest amount of time needed to neutralize certain pathogenic agents. In this case, we have hepatitis B and HIV for 60 minutes of immersion. And the longest amount of time written on the box, it's the time you should leave your instruments immersed for at least for that period of time. Also be careful not to splatter okay so we leave the instruments there for 60 minutes I'm also documenting that I've inserted one explorer and one mirror into the disinfection um, recipient also adds the automatically uh, time and date stamp after one hour we'll go and rinse our instrument okay we're rinsing the instruments again and after that they'll be ready for packaging Let them drain for a minute or two. Okay, we've rinsed our instruments again. Now we need to dry them. I'm only using paper towels to do this. Some, um, some doctors and assistants use uh, cloth towels. I find this to be a bit more difficult as you need to uh, process the towels, wash them, and so on. Uh, it's easier with, with paper towels. So after the instruments are dried, you need to check them. Uh, in order to check them, I'm using a magnifier glass with light. So you need to look for any sign of debris or contamination this uh, magnif uh, loop has also uh, a bigger magnification section as you can see here so if i think i'm seeing something i'm using this bigger magnification to to inspect it more thoroughly after inspection you can proceed with packaging I'm also documenting this
checking before packaging. So all the instruments have been validating have been validated for packaging. If some of the instruments have not been validated, I um, explain what needs to be reprocessed and why. Okay. Now we can patch, package the instruments. For packaging, I'm using a normal dental sealer with um, pouches on a roll. I'm inserting in each and every package a class 5 uh, steam sterilization uh, marker. This will uh, show me that the inside of the bag has been sterilized. The bag also has some uh, indicators, but they're class one. These, these indicators only show you that the bag has been in an autoclave and um, the outside of the bag has been sterilized, but it doesn't say anything about the inside of the bag and the actual instruments. When this changes color, you can be sure that the inside of the bag is sterile. Also, for uh, traceability purposes, I'm stamping the date and also the packaging lot on each of the class 5 integrated strips and also on the package itself okay as you can see I have my pouch pre-sealed at one end. I do this um, before starting to process the, the instruments as I find this easier. Let me put my glove on. Of course, without filming it, this is a lot easier. So I place my instruments in the bag. Okay, so we seal the bag with the class 5 indicator strip inside. Very important, on each and every bag you need to check the seal. If the seal has any sort of discontinuity, you need to repackage those instruments. Okay. the lot and the lot number, the packaging lot number and the packaging date. Okay, and this goes into the autoclave. Be sure don't not to overload your autoclave. Also a class five indicator strip goes with every sterilization cycle. This ensures everything is, is checked and in order. And uh, it's an extra measure you can take to ensure you, you have a proper sterilization cycle. I also document the packaging of the instruments. So I would I will have one concentration bag packaged, the lot number, time and date stamps are added automatically.
and then I do my serialization cycle. I also log the serialization cycle, whether or not I'm using some sort of test program, Bowen Dick, Helix, whatever. And the parameters of the serialization cycle. And after the sterilization, the packaging should look like this. As you see, the class 5 integrated strip marker has um, a pink color now. It's changed his col its color from blue to pink. That means the inside of the bag is sterile. I'm also labeling each bag with uh, a QR code that um, contains all the information of the um, sterilization cycle, the sterilization date, the expiration date on this package. For this manufacturer, the expiration date is six months. And the number of the sterilization cycle. These informations are uh, mandatory in order to identify each bag individually and um, see the information about the sterilization cycle and all the history and traceability of the of the instruments if you have any questions about all this process it's maybe it's a it seems a bit complicated but it's really not it's it's a bit complicated for me to explain it in simple terms but if you have any questions leave them leave them in the section in the comment section below and i'll i'll try to answer as best as i can thank you for watching